Welcome to my second attempt at making stereoscopic 3D out of 2D media in DaVinci Resolve using the depth map function. Now, the last video I told you that I had no idea what I was doing, and in this video I still don't know what I'm doing, but I have looked at your comments and I think I have simplified things and I've also fixed some of the problems that you have mentioned. So hopefully this works for you. Now, the depth map function was never intended to be used for stereoscopic 3D. It was intended to be uh, different depths of grading. So you could have a person sitting in a car and you could either grade the back seat or the passenger in the back seat a different type of tone than the front or whatever you wanted to do. You could do uh, defocusing type effect or whatever, but that, that's what it was intended for. Now, also, you're not going to get Hollywood results with this. Hollywood has a whole bunch of people working on a movie to convert, and they're doing a whole bunch of work, even though they're using computers. They're probably using things like AI. They're using uh, calculations. The computer can calculate one moving object in front of the other. You know, it can calculate what the depth is because of the speed the objects are moving at. And also, like on Harry Potter, they use models. So if you had a person walking across a, the, from one side of the camera to the other, they could use a 3D model and walk across with that 3D model and then map the film onto that 3D model. And that's kind of what we're doing here with the depth map. But without further ado, let's look at the tutorial for using DaVinci Resolve depth map function to make stereoscopic 3D. Okay, in DaVinci Resolve Studio, you put a video or an image or whatever you're going to convert to 3D in your video timeline. If you don't know how to do that, please go and watch a basic tutorial on it. There are all kinds of basic tutorials of how to video edit. Then click the magic wand here, which will bring you into Fusion. Now you have your video or your image, your media, and that's called Media in one and then there's Media Out 1, which is the output. Now what we need to do is copy the Media 1, and that's right-click, Copy, or Control-C on Windows, and then right-click and Paste, or Control-V on Windows. I'm just going to set it right there. Now Shift-Spacebar brings up a search bar and your tool uh, set so you can type in depth map or depth and then it'll come up there's depth map add and it somehow attached to that media probably because I was using it but all you have to do is detach it and then press shift and hold shift while you put it right here into the flow and drop it and now it's showing you what the depth map is seeing I'm going to swap the depth map output to here by pressing 1 and then I'm going to press 2 to turn it off and I'm going to click on media out and press 2 again to bring out the, what the media out will be showing. That will change when we actually start adding things to our, our flow. So the next thing we need is a displacement 3D so shift space displace. displace 3d add and it put it way over here so we do a hold shift and you see how the different color is that means that it's going to actually attach oh it should have attached oh probably because it's got multiple inputs or something okay we'll detach that we need the displacement 3d and then shift space for a merge 3d merge 3d add and that attached correctly. And then we need a renderer. So we need render, render 3D add. And now we have to work on our copy of our video. So we have to have space shift again. We have to have an image plane, 3D. That's so that this image will be projected onto this plane and the plane goes into the displacement. And now this should output. Yep, now it outputs what it is seeing, the displacement. 
So we've got a depth map that looks like this. It's telling the displacement what it can displace. So if you go, if you click on displace 3D, you can actually add or subtract to how much it is actually displacing. I'm going to pull it down a little bit because it's mushing my hat up a little. And then I'm going to click on image plane and I'm going to scale this up by going to transform and we'll scale it up so that we can actually see it as though it was actually a video and not a something in 3D space. Now we go back to displace and we can look at what it's actually doing. See how it's bulging different parts of the picture up. Now you can control the parts of the picture by going into the depth map. So I clicked on depth map. Make sure this is on whatever kind of quality you think, depending on your computer and what, what your needs are. You can click this to open up the options here and you can make the far limit, which is whatever's in the back, go a little bit further. See how it's moving that backwards? Because this is all black. So it's, it's acting as though that tree is further behind me than it was before. Now it's acting on me and then a little bit of the tree right here, as you can see right here, and then that tripod would be up front like that. And then there's something, I guess, part of the tripod or something up here that it thinks is a little bit closer. You can adjust these in different ways. You can do the gamma and, and all kinds of stuff to try to, to add more depth into your picture. If you get it darker, then it's going to be more depth. Lighter is going to be more further, closer to the camera, the virtual camera. And now you can see some of the edges are appearing on the side. So now we have to go back to our image plane and scale it a little bit more. You will lose a little bit of your image, but that's all right. So back to displacement 3D, no, back to depth map, you can also do isolation. So if you want to really get into all of this, you can get a little more technical. You can isolate me from the rest of the image and all that, but I'm not going to get into that. You can mess around with that and see if it works for your image. It will work differently for different images. Okay. So we've got displacement, we've got merge 3D, we've got it rendered, we've got it rendering out to media out. Now, how do we make it into 3D? Well, we need to look at renderer again. See how it says I, left, right, stack. You can stack it actually vertical or horizontal like that, or you can just do left and right. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to make another copy of this by right clicking, copy, and right clicking paste and now i've got two renderers i'm going to set this renderer on right this renderer is still on left now i'm going to pull the merge 3d which is bringing all of these images all this image material into that thing so we've got the same information coming in but this one's going to be right eye and that'll be left eye and then we need to shift space again and get a combiner. Add a combiner. Take the output out of that and put it into the combiner. Put this into the combiner. Now the combiner has horizontal and vertical information. Let me get this back on so you can see what's going on. It's horizontal right now. If I click vertical, it'll stack it for over under. 3D TVs or whatever you're going to watch this from, a projector or whatever. And if you want anaglyph, you should do shift space and type in anaglyph. Add. Well, we don't want it there. That doesn't make any sense. We want to shift and drop it right there. Now you can see it looks a little weird. That's because the anaglyph needs to know what the combiner is showing. So the combiner is on horizontal right now. So you click anaglyph and you click horizontal. If you were to click, if you were to click vertical, then it would look very weird until you disable that and put vertical. So it doesn't really matter what the anaglyph is on as long as it matches what the combiner is feeding it. So here you can 
choose different kinds of anaglyphs, like the red green, red blue, amber blue. That was a short lived thing, wasn't it? I don't know if anybody even remembers that. The green magenta was popular for a little while. And then you can do half color, color, optimized, and du bois. As I've said before, it sounds fancy and it is fancy. I think this looks more correct, so I'll do half color. And then you could just go to your renderer from there, which is the, the uh, little spaceship thing. Or if you don't want to render it like that, you can take the output away and render it as an actual 3D, like a 3D TV. You'd have to click to click combiner and set it on whatever you'd like. But as you can see, because of the aspect ratio, it's doing almost like a 4K this way and a HD that way for some reason on that one. You'd have to actually go in and set up your image specs. The, this spec is showing HD, so I don't know. You'd have to fiddle with that. I used to know <laughs> a little bit about that kind of stuff, about how to get the right aspect ratio so your output is correct, but when you're dealing with 3D, it can be a little bit tricky. So you're going to have these black bars on this. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Or you will have them down here as your final output. So we'll stick with the anaglyph for right now. And we'll just drop that back in and tell it, what was it? It was on horizontal. Okay, so we'll click that and click horizontal. And there we go. We're back to where we were. So fiddle around with it, see what you can do, but that's basically it. So you have the image coming in, you make a copy of that image, you add the depth map, you add an image plane to this one, and then you put the displacement. So this image is going through a depth map and fed into displacement. This image is going to an image plane so that you can actually see it, and then that's going to displacement. Once you have adjusted your displacement and you adjust your depth map, then it goes into a merge 3D, which is required to be able to actually output some 3D. Then you render the 3D and you choose left for this one, right for that one, or whatever. You could do left for that one and right for that one, but whatever your setup is, and then you can combine them together. And that's where you can choose whether it's horizontal or vertical. And then, of course, you can add anaglyph or you can just go with the, the stacked one for the 3D TV or maybe you're doing output for VR. You can actually do, let's see, I think you can actually do an output for VR with a spherical camera, I believe. But that's getting into, oops, spherical camera, that's getting it getting into some realms that are a little bit more sophisticated and last time I added a camera it didn't go well so you can mess around with that but spherical camera I believe has output for yes there it is you can do output for latitude longitude V cross uh, or vertical cross horizontal cross vertical strip horizontal strip so you can actually do like a VR setup with that Thanks for watching. I hope this solves some of the problems that you have commented on and it has simplified things for you. Uh, taking out that 3D camera that I put in the first time definitely simplifies things in, in my mind. Now the results I got, eh, you know, they were all right, but you know, it depends on the subject matter. It depends on what kind of video you have. And then of course it can take some extra tweaking and people that maybe no fusion a little bit better than I do could possibly use that isolation thing to isolate the person or foreground object and then they could use that as an element and then they isolate something in the midground and then the background and then they could take all those uh, those elements and put them in the 3d space and then move a camera in front of them and you would have parallax and you would have a better 3d rep representation of your video or image so you might get better results that way. But personally, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I can't do that kind of stuff. But if you can, that's great. 
You might have also uh, seen the GoPro cameras in that video that I was holding, and that was from a tutorial on my Patreon page. I have a tutorial about how to use GoPros. I, I, can, I do uh, stereoscopic 3D editing. This is real 3D, not just conversion. So if you're interested in using two cameras or cameras with mirrors, I go into that also. All that stuff is on my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Wheatstone Homes. I hope to see you as a member on there pretty soon. And you know what? I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.